When I grew up in Iran, I had a childhood friend named Ali. We used to play together, but that became more difficult because Ali was diagnosed with a disease that made his muscles weaker and weaker. Gradually, he needed help with everything, feeding himself, scratching an itch, and even giving me a proper hug. He passed away at only 16 years old. Attending his funeral was one of the last things I did before moving to Norway in 2011. I often thought Ali was born into a poor neighborhood in Iran, had severe disability, and died young. But I, his buddy, was born not so far from him, and now I live in one of the best welfare states in the world, and I'm completely healthy. I realized how extremely privileged I am, and my purpose is to not waste my opportunities, but to work hard to make the world to a better place for people like my dear friend Ali. This made me pursue an education in biomechanical engineering and entrepreneurship. I have many ideas about gadgets and assistive devices for people with reduced mobility, but I liked focus and experience until I met Professor of Robotics, Tari Elian. Professor Lian had a brother named Mongor who had lost mobility in his arms. Both brothers had searched for assistive devices but found nothing that could restore Mongor's arm mobility and his independence. Therefore, they had decided to build their own solution. They had built a robotic exoskeleton that could assist motion in the shoulder, elbow, and wrist and was controlled using vocal commands. Promere. Promere. Fem. Supinere. Supinere. Fire. Supinere. Fire. Bøye. Bøye. Fire. Bøye. Fire. Heve. Heve. To. Heve. To. The prototype was promising. However, both brothers knew that if they wanted to help others as well, they needed more people on board. They were both in their 70s, and they wanted younger partners to continue their work. When I saw this impressive exoskeleton, I thought how amazing it was, and, and if Ali was alive, he would have loved to use it. If Ali had used this robotic exoskeleton, he would have said, hey, look, I'm Iron Man. I thought how incredibly meaningful it could be to build Iron Man suits to help people like my dear friend Ali by building on Professor Lian's work. Inspired, I joined their mission and brought some friends and fellow nerds along. We were excited to test our prototype with users with various health conditions, and we thought the prototype is ready to be launched quite soon and revolutionize the lives of millions of people. Some users praised the innovation, while the majority of users found it too bulky, heavy, and impossible to put on and take off independently. One of the users even called the prototype the instrument of torture. Not because of any physical pain or discomfort, but because of the social awkwardness of speaking to his arm. Imagine that you're at a fine restaurant and you ask the waiter to serve you a slow-cooked lamb shoulder and a 7-Up. The robot arm you just saw in the video may hear slow, shoulder, 7, and up, and start moving your shoulder slowly upwards for 7 seconds. 7 long seconds. <laughs> we were forced to rethink our approach. We realized that we must build a a robotic exoskeleton that is lighter, more comfortable, easier to put on and take off independently. It should be intuitive to use, and most importantly, it should be an assistive device that a person wears with pride and dignity. We discovered that actually very few people with disabilities in arms and hands are completely paralyzed. The big majority, even those with very serious health conditions, have some small residual movements left. The problem is that they lack strength 
and precision and the endurance to complete functional tasks. Therefore, they end up not, end up not using their affected arm at all. We wondered, what if we measure the small residual movements of the affected arm and amplify those movements? After four years of research and development, I'm thrilled to publicly demonstrate our newest prototype of the world's first mobile assistive device for the entire arm. Imagine that I have severe disability in my left arm while my right arm is completely healthy, a very common condition for millions of people globally. I'll now show you how easy it is to wear the device, to put, it, put the device on using only one hand. First, I pick up the body harness, which is 3D printed and custom made based on a 3D scan of my body. It helps me to maintain a good posture and transfers the weight of the device to my torso. I fasten the strap for safety reason. Then I pick up the robot's arm, attaching it to the body harness. Then I use my healthy hand to place my paretic arm carefully inside the device. Fasten these straps for safety reasons. Now I turn the device on. If I make a little effort in my elbow, our sensors and software understand my intent and start moving my elbow up, upwards. If I stop trying, the elbow motor stops. The whole, it holds my arm in this position without me needing to make an effort to keep the position. If I want to lower my elbow, I push gently downwards, and the motor follows my lead. With a little effort in my shoulder, I can also lift my shoulder up and down. The same principle applies to my wrist. With a slight movement, I can rotate my, shoulder, my wrist inwards and outwards. With a little push, I can also open my grip and gently close it again. I can also move my entire arm simultaneously. These movements can help people with severe upper limb disability to perform essential daily activities, things that many of us take for granted. Like, for, for example, holding a vegetable steady with one hand and chopping with the other hand, or carrying laundry, or simply embracing someone you love. The real impact of this device is seen when it's tested with, with someone who truly needs it, a person with severe upper limb disability. We have been involving medical experts and our users from a very early stage, and we have been testing the prototypes in controlled environments, and the results have been very promising. One of our users is Kristen. She got stroke at, uh, 11 years ago, which left her paralyzed on her right arm. She has been contributing with ideas and feedback in our development and she has been testing the newest prototype. As you can see, she can do some abrupt movements, but she struggles with, with precision and strength. With the exoskeleton, she can, she can move her entire arm seamlessly and hold her arm in the desired position. She has found many workarounds and tiny tricks to perform some two-handed activities. However, performing these activities without assistance is very challenging and tiring. As you can see, <laughs> she can use this device to easily move, open her clenched hand, move her entire arm with very little effort, and do a, 
simple task like pouring these last spoons of pesto out of its container. Many stroke survivors end up in nursing home as they age, especially. Christine, like many others, wants to live at home for as long as possible. This device can make that possible by empowering her to be more independent in her daily life. We aim to empower people to, in to return to work and engage in activities they love, benefiting the individuals and society. Our journey has just begun. We are now refining our technology by involving more users to capture their diversity. And we're working to meet international standards and regulations paving the way to bring this device to millions. At the heart of this innovation is a simple but powerful idea. A strong will to create a better life with disability. Everyone, no matter their physical challenges, deserves the freedom to live life on their own terms. We aim to make that vision into reality with continued innovation and willpower. Thank you very much.